Good morning, everyone. Um, Niels is going to be talking about, well, running a buff on Lintian, which you've been contributing to for a couple of years now. Yes, since 2010, 11 pieces. So, hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm glad to see how many, so many people showed up. So, basically, what I want us to debate today is Lintian supports having third party checks now, so why aren't you using any or writing any? Um, I have a couple of questions we can uh, t talk about, and I also, in the end, added some links to tutorials and examples on how to write these checks if you want to play a bit with it. Um, so, one of the questions we have here is would you be interested in maintaining your own Lynchian based checks, um, either for your own team or for some domain or some language? like the package Ruby or package Java checks or something like that. Question. Go ahead. No, just go ahead. <laughs> um, can they be written in Python? The checks, no. That's why we have separate package Linitian for Python. I'm sorry, what was that again? That's why we have a separate package called Linitian for Python, written in Python, doing checks for Python. Um, I'm afraid I have to prove you wrong here. It is okay. mostly written in Perl. I do know it forks a separate Python process twice or something like that, but it is mostly written in Perl. Okay. And it actually uses most of the Lynchian framework. So what? You have a question more, come with it. Then my question is, why is it a separate package? Because Jacob Wilk decided he wanted a separate pack, I'm not actually sure. But in the old days, it was more monkey patching than it is now. In the old days, it was more monkey patching than it is now. Um, it still does a bit of monkey patching because he doesn't like a couple of letters or something like that. He doesn't feel it's efficient enough or something. Um, but you will have to ask him why. But I believe you can install Lynchian for Python next to your Lynchian and run Lynchian dash dash profile Debian Python or something like that, and then it runs all these checks, and it should mostly just work. You can go try it. Okay. So, okay. so uh, would anyone be interested in doing some checks for an uh, excellent? Um, so I already contributed to some checks. Now, the thing is, as far as I understand you, the question is whether I would be interested in maintaining them separately from Lintian? Well, not necessarily separately, but also that. So, for example, in your case, you added system D checks, which right. would make sense as a general purpose check for many packages. Yes. Um, but if you're doing a team-specific check, it might not make sense to have it in Lintian proper because it is only relevant to the spe specific team. Right, so I'm also involved in Go packaging, so there we could have that. Yeah, now, okay. my question, though, is um, I'm not entirely clear on when Lintian gets updated in such a way that the web interface gets the new version and when you would release new stuff and how my separate package would play into that. Maybe you can clarify. Um, so the web version we see is a git checkout, so at the current stage, your package would simply not fit into it. Um, but generally, it wouldn't anyway, unless your checks are in the, in the default profile, um, which your team-specific or language-specific checks might not be, depending on how general they are. Um, so that was the web thing. What was the other thing you asked? Um, the other thing is, whenever there's a new Lintian release, how would my package be involved in that? Um, so how do you coordinate that, or what's the plan there? So currently we have no plan because we have nothing to plan for. Um, the, uh, Jacob Wilk with his uh, Linton for Python they decided that he doesn't trust our backwards compatibility, which is a good call right now, um, because I'm not promising any. Um, so he has a very strict version dependencies and then it's uninstallable for two days while he bumped the uh, API usage and then that's that. And okay. sometimes you just have to bump the versions and it just works. Um, but yes, staple API is something we don't really have, at least not for the majority of things we provide. Um, I do know that, but I also need to know what people want to use so I can make the API for it. Um, right now, we have a lot of internal stuff that just works because it's only supposed to work for us. 
So. Um, yeah, we have been thinking about uh, writing some checks for package Perl team, just as you wrote it to check for team specific conventions or policies. So far, it's only an idea. No one has looked into it, but I guess we will. I'm glad to hear that. Are there any other people considering doing a language check or something, or package check? If nothing else, we can meet up after the talk and uh, debate how to get into it, then no. Okay. So, the other question we have here is, if you did write your own checks, possibly in a separate package or in Lynching proper, but not necessarily in the default profile, would it be important for you that it ended up on the Lynching deep in the door website? Or is that just meh? So can I show your hands how many would say it's a necessity that it ended up in the website? Okay, that's a bit. And how many from I don't care at all? That's two or three. Okay, and anyone who can comment on, uh, want to say anything extending? So, go ahead. Well, just a general comment. It's a typical case in which the people who don't care can just, you know, don't look at the website. It's not like it has <laughs> negative consequences. No, but it, it's a question of whether or not I have to spend time adding support for it, so. Okay. Um, and here is another one. Yes. Oh, sorry. I just want to say something on that. So it's often the case that um, if I'm maintaining the packages and the linting checks on my team, the packages from my team are going to probably not have the problems that the checks are looking for anyway. They're going to be the best maintained in the archive. And it's other people who are maintaining packages outside of my team, related to my team, that would trigger these checks are more likely to have the problems. So those are the ones that you're most likely going to want to have on linting.debian.org. Right. Okay. So. Yes. Slightly related to this, if I write a Lintian check for um, packages that have some Java in it, how should, is it easy f for the check to detect, well, this is a package containing some Java stuff and I need to run and I leave all other package in peace? No, generally we just run the check on everything and if they detect something, they emit it and if they don't, they just don't. Usually a do nothing check is fairly fast, um, even though it checks all files or something like that. So I would have to come up with some idea um, how to know whether this uh, rule applies to the package or not. Yes, if it's, for t well, possibly yes, depending on what you're trying to do. We don't have a good way of detecting it in general. So. <laughs> So, um, another thing we have, I have as a question here is, are there some of the design limitations in Lynchian that would be a deal breaker to you um, if you were to write your own checks? And um, I have to add here that some of the design choices we list as design choices are actually more of a preference, so like determinism and not using the app cache or stuff like that is things we have chosen not to do, but it's actually things you can do. But there are some other things like you can only process a given binary together with its source. Um, and right now you can only, they only process the same version or the binary is built from one version. So is there any of that which you consider changing if you were to use this framework? No? Okay, that's pretty nice. I don't remember the specific use case, but I'm pretty sure when we try to add some uh, common specific tests to Lindian, we had the usual uh, fight with the deterministic uh, approach in the sense that we wanted something like if this package is installed, then do this, otherwise do that. And that was considered like breaking the, the determinism for some value of the de determinism. Right. Um, so you can do that in a third party check if you want. Um, so. That is just something we don't want in Lynchian proper because it's, it ruins the determinism and it's a little difficult to process.
possibly test for perhaps, uh, depending on exactly how it was done. Um, but it's not something you cannot do. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, I'll have some tutorials and examples if you haven't seen how to write a check. Um, I have the tutorials open, uh, the checks open here. So on the screen here, I have a simple source check. Um, it's written in a given package. There's a rule for that listed in the user manual. Um, and basically, this, this line here is the thing that emits a tag. It requires nothing else than that. Um, and the hard part is figuring out when to do it and when not to do it. The other part of writing a check is having a small description file that, first of all, describes what the uh, check is named, and what it implies to in a bit of description, and then you add tags listed downwards. Um, first the name, how severe it is, and how certain your check are, is of it. And then this is the part that's shown with Lynch and info. So, but that's basically all I have. So, are there any other questions, any ideas, anything you want to try? Or there's a question here. Um, you suggest more people uh, um, create their own plugins apart from Lintian, right? Not only, For but yes. Yeah. Is there some way, uh, someone not knowing that there is a plugin for, let's say, Java Team, uh, to be uh, to be warned that they should install the plugin to? Uh, you want Lingen to warn if you if it looks at it and said this looks like a Java package. Well, basically, it comes back to the same problem that Thomas had with how do I know this is a package I have to apply to. Um, and there's no real good way to do that. There's heuristics, which works, for example, if you're looking for a, for a team package, you could look for the maintainer containing your team email or something like that, which would be fairly trivial. But you can have Java packages outside the Java team, I suppose, so those would not be detected. Um, and so it's a little hard to warn for it um, because of by detecting it in the first place. Maybe some checking for build depends or whatever, I don't know. Um, you can check for the build depends, but, well, we, I suppose we could add heuristics, but it doesn't add up in a, in a sense that if I have to write in Lingen proper and check for all the things you might be missing, then every time somebody adds a new thing, I have to update the Lingen to warn about it. Um, that's the only problem with that approach. Um, so I'm a, there's a question for Thomas. When I develop a Lintian test, uh, how do I test it? Do I um, need to run it on um, a source package every time, or can I run it on an unpacked tree? And second question is, can I, um, while I'm doing packaging, can I run a subset of Lintian tests on my um, folder where I do the packaging without building the source package, um, running it in pbuilder? Uh, for the second question first, no, you cannot run Lintian on an unpacked source tree at the moment. Um, there's a request for it that's quite old, um, and you're welcome to run the patch for it. But there's a technical problem in how do you detect, detect Croft in a source package that is unpacked. Because you might have a git file that is supposed to be there because dpackage source will filter it out when it creates the, the debian.target set or something like that. So you actually get a lot of false positives in that that you then have to manually filter out, filter out based on the type, uh, based on the thing you do. Um, in regards to testing um, the gen checks, we have some Perl unit testing that loads the checks, test that the checks can be loaded, that your uh, description file is syntactically correct. 
Um, we also have an extensive test suite in Lynchin itself, but it doesn't generalize very well. Um, you may remember I tried to do a uh, deep in testing framework with Poltag at some point that never really got off. Um, that was an attempt to generalize the Lynchin test suite to work with other packages as well. Um, so, but I will mention for completeness the testing utilities that we, um, the unit testing utilities we use in Lynchin itself are actually installed with Lynchin itself so you can use the same unit testing that we do. Um, it's a simple thing but it catches common mistakes like um, things doesn't compile, syntax errors, um, what not even spelling mistakes in your uh, tag description to some extent. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions in regards to third party checks? Anyone have any ideas, any crazy ideas to what they want to implement or use it for? I suggested, uh, are there anyone here doing backports to Debian backports? So a couple of you. So how many of you have tried to upload a backport and have it rejected because you forgot to use dash v some version? Show of hands. Now how many of you would have liked Lynchin to warn you and tell you you're doing something? Yes. You can do that now. I actually suggested this to the back mailing list a while ago. Um, so if anyone's interested in doing that, come see me afterwards. I'll set you up with what you need to know. There's a question there. Um, another issue that is not checked, well, hasn't been checked. I've just yesterday upgraded uh, Lynchon, actually, from, from Unstable. But um, so what occurred to me is that I, well, forgot to release the change log. So it was unreleased on top in the first line. And that hasn't been checked in the past either, so I'm not sure if it's checked now, but if not, then it would be a cool feature. There is a bug for it that is currently tagged and won't fix. Um, I don't remember the exact discussions, but a lot of people don't want Lynchin to annoy them with unreleased because they, they do incremental builds, so they build and then they uh, run Lynchin, then fix something, they run Lynchin, fix something. Um, but there are also people like you who want it to say you're forgetting to add the really unreleased thing. Most people tend to uh, have deep put warn them about that. But this is a thing where you can do a personal check for your own usage to check for uh, unreleased being there. David has a question. Would it be possible, I mean, there's no sense all of us doing the same personal check, so, or say 50% of us doing the same personal check. Would it be possible to have uh, optional checks that we could just enable with some config file? It would, but someone would have to maintain it, and I'm not sure I'm willing to commit to maintaining it, at least not alone. Okay, I mean, so I don't know that these checks would be any different than the checks you have now. It's more a question of you're not sure if everybody wants them. And in that case, it seems like having the check and being able to switch it off and on or. Yeah. It, I mean, some of the checks people want can't be done due to um, political reasons in, uh, in Lynchin, like checking the app cache if you're doing something really stupid. Uh, I did for fun make a prototype test of the check for that. I think, um, see if I have it. No, I don't have it here. Um, but it's fairly simple to do, but a lot of people have a lot of ideas and I want people to write them because I don't scale. Um, okay. I don't know if you saw the XORG uh, buff, but you saw the nice bot graph that kept growing. I have the same problem in Lynchin, although I didn't reach the 1000 mark yet. So, um, but I like to keep that under control, so I'm hoping to spread out the work and maybe have a distributed um, solution like DebHub I have at the moment. So having a package of extra checks that somebody else maintained would be work okay from a technical point of view? 
Yes, it okay. would. That, that's fine then. Yeah. And I might be willing to come and change it, if not uh, at least consult, you know, be a consultant for it. Okay. There is a question again. Mike, I believe. So from your, from your last remark, do you understand that you actually need help? Sorry? From your last remark about the comparison between Lynch and Depp Helper, is it actually that you need help in terms of the in, team around you? In every the, uh, development announcement email, there is request for help. This is a nice project to help. You just need 30 minutes every now and then to do a check. Yes. Yeah. So it's good to speak it out here loud, I think. Yes. Um, I would greatly appreciate more lynching maintainers, and obviously this is a trick to make you stop doing lynching work and eventually move into lynching and doing my work for me. Uh, so, um, but also even then, if you do your own checks, it's going to downscale the amount of bug reports I get for various things, including checks for neat white space usage, which I'm somewhat hesitant to add if only because it seems like a waste of time to of my time to do it. Okay. So, um, since there are no more uh, questions about lynching and these checks, so um, is there anything else people want to debate about lynching? We have about 25 minutes left, so the yeah. floor is open for anything lynching related at all. Mm, going once. Paul has Just a random idea. Um, pick a random package in the archive or a random package from mentors and have a monthly ISC meeting to find issues in the package and then write checks for it. So that's a good idea. Anyone wants to volunteer for something like that? Show of hands, don't be shy. I know it's recorded, but uh, I'm sure we can have it cut out. No, okay. So um, basically that's the same problem I have with everything else I do in lynching. There are plenty of great ideas, there are just not many people wanting to do them. And also I've seen the, the list of sponsoring checks, you have a lot of ideas for what you run. And great idea, somebody needs to run them. Um, and I'm sure a lot of new people would appreciate having them, but my workload does not quite allow me to do that, or rather or do the expense of other things. Okay, so uh, let me ask you a question. What do you think is the greatest flaw in lynching? What is the greatest problem with lynching? It, it's written in Perl. Okay, do you volunteer to be voted in Python? Again, we have, we have a chicken and egg problem with that. There's a question here in front. From Michael. Um, so first of all, um, this is very nitpicky, and I just want to thank you for LinkedIn, and it's really a great tool. But um, I think that it's slow, not per se the running it on packages, even though that is slow too. I notice it really a lot with the Go packages that are quite big in terms of megabytes, um, because they contain a lot of compiled stuff. Um, but also, especially in development, like, um, not sure if you remember, but when we were talking about it, I mentioned that I was unable to run the test suite um, in an acceptable time frame, like it would take me many, many, many minutes. Um, and it would be hard to run it in the first place, but that could probably be fixed. But um, getting it quicker to run is a much, much harder problem. But I would think that this is what keeps me from working more on Lintian, even though I now have some experience. Right. So, Lynching itself is admittedly slow. I have been trying to improve that since 2.5.8, and basically every one or two releases I fix something and pipeline or something, so reduce this time for a special case and all. Um, and I've got to the point where it's now slow rather than horribly slow. Um, but there's a fundamentally a lot of problems design-wise and possibly even in just what we do. So. We have some ordering in what we can do when, and they seem to be stalled on unpacking things, 
checking what type of file it is with file, um, which got a lot better in one of the previous releases. And then there is, if you have a thousand man pages, uh, it's been here, I need the current maintainers. I'm sorry, but that's a problem in MANDB. It takes one or, 0 0.1 or 2 seconds to process a man page, so when you have a thousand of them, it accumulates. And you basically need to find and lynch Colin Watson or have him do something about it. And he knows it, it is on his to-do list, but apparently that's a pretty long to-do list. Colin's not in the room now. Then he doesn't know he has to run. Um, the test suite is annoying me as well. Um, I did a fix for that um, to some extent, but half the problem is that basically every test we have uh, of the expensive ones takes about three seconds in build time alone. So optimized D package would actually be a good call here. Uh, and then, of course, something that Lynch needs time to process on. And, but right now, I think the build time of all these packages is actually uh, one of the slower parts now. Um, but yes, I would like to see it fast as well. I think there was a question from Bernard first and then Mike. Um, one thing that I think could be a bit improved uh, with the test suite is uh, documenting or making the documentation easier found how to one only parts of the test suite. If I add a new check, I, I'll always need uh, some five minutes till I've figured out how to only run my new test. It's, uh, um, there are some things uh, written in there, but I usually always look at the wrong uh, place to find how to do it. Yeah, I know. It's, I'm not really sure I'm allowed to mess with the top level st uh, structure of that. We do actually have a uh, d part documentation of how the test suite works, how you've run it. Um, it is in doc tutorial, engine tutorial, and then test suite the part, and you just unpurl doc on it, and you get this nicely formatted readable thing rather than this. Um, and then it tells you how to run specific tests based on whether it's a given tag or it's a given check or just a specific test in itself and how to throw more threads at it. Um, so I might need to do a top level readme for that uh, and restructure that. That might be a good idea. Can somebody write that to the copy, please? Uh, a top level readme for uh, pointing people to the right documentation. Uh, in regards to speed, uh, just before Mike gets on, there, is one, there are two things you can do to improve Lynch and speed right now by installing optional packages. Uh, one is installing lib out to die Perl 2.18 or higher, which fixes um, a startup um, time cost. And the other is installing lib Perl IO gzip Perl, which reduces the number of times we have to fork an external gzip to decompress something. Um, especially the latter for K3BSD actually can take off minutes of runtime. Uh, so, so is it okay if I change the topic now and go away from speed of the test suite? Go ahead. I think so. Okay. Yeah. So, so I actually would have want, wanted to continue where Michael sort of started with the comment, just a couple of comments before. Um, I want to give you my really big appreciation about what Lynchian does. Especially, well, I've become a DD in March and have been, before March, I've, well, uploaded to mentors, did Lynchian checks and everything. So it's, it's the teaching tool in packaging for newcomers. Yes. If it wasn't Lynchian, people would not know how to fulfill all these different parts in the policy. So it's, it's actually in, for, for the, Newcomer process, new, new member process in Debian, it's the essential tool. And I'm, I'm really surprised how we become really shy, all of us, when it comes to you actually requesting help. So um, what, 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 I, what I can say for myself is I wouldn't be able to, to oversee all these policy things and, and stuff all these elements into tests, specific tests for specific tech packages in specific languages. So it's just, normally if you do the work, if you like, like you're, you're a Lynchian developer, um, there is a point where you don't realize what kind of great work you're doing, but you're doing it. And um, 
And what happens as well is that you're so so into it that people stare at you and think, oh, that's Niels. So he's doing this Lynchian thing. And some, there might be a few people here in the room that would say, yes, I, I add to that. I send patches and everything. But probably those people are really busy with other areas in Debian as well. So, um, so there's this appreciation first. And then there is this, how can we get people into supporting you? Because it's a really crucial tool you're providing for Debian. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Paul has a remark. Paul has a remark. Um, so I have a question. Do you have any data about, well, we, we kind of push Lintian onto all the new maintainers and they all use it and that's all good. But do you have any data about how many long-term Debian people are looking at the output of Lintian or explicitly not looking at it or whatever? Um, no, I don't actually have concrete numbers. I do eventually or occasionally get mail, angry mails from people that got their package onto rejected, especially when the FTP masters fix their uh, problem with um, non overridable text actually being overridable. And then between two uploads of a given package, and somebody came to me and said, Lingen is brain damaged, and yes, it was a false positive, but they had known for a year that it was supposed to not be accepted, but he just went on and didn't. But um, now I don't actually have concrete numbers. And on a related note, I actually don't control what is auto-rejected and what is not. Uh, you have to uh, convince the FTP masters here. Um, although I suggest some tax, but in general, I don't actually control it. So. I believe there was a comment here, yes, on more automated rejections. You have to drag the uh, FTP masters into a room and uh, beat them with a stick of what you want them to actually reject. There's a question from David, I think. I don't know. Ganef volunteers to yell at those people for you. Excellent. Thank you, Ganef. So. Um, did you have something, or did you retract it? Banner? No, you retracted it. So, along the lines of who's using Lintian and who's not, um, anecdotally, myself, I'm using Lintian, but not the pedantic checks. And actually, it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine that people tell new users to use the pedantic checks, because I think they're the ones that require the most judgment to know if they make sense. But anyway, that's just my personal opinion. That is true. There are actually many cases where we should really consider whether or not a given pedantic check makes sense. Um, mostly, I let the um, maintainer itself decide that um, when I do occasionally have time to sponsor. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I think um, I'm of the opposite opinion. I think it's good if new maintainers uh, look at the pedantic checks, if only uh, there is a higher chance that they have a check which they see that it doesn't apply to them. I think a big problem uh, of Lintian and new maintainers is that Lintian is too good. So new people start to see Lintian as the thing that is always right, and if Lintian says something, they must follow it. Yes. And I think that's why more pedantic checks uh, visible for newcomers is good, because then they see that, uh, that these are guidelines and informations, and uh, uh, while Lintian is good, it's not an uh, all omniscient <coughs> being that can tell them what to do. The, the problem is actually you got people asking me whether or not it's okay to overwrite no upstream change log, which is a pedantic tag for those upstream that doesn't have it. Uh, and it's like most people don't even bother doing that. But they come and ask me, oh, so, so I'll override this tag. And it's like, yeah, I don't care. Um, but yes, I don't, I should, 
generally so there's people running it with all the tickets there are and then manually fill out the uninteresting ones um, at first and perhaps overwrite them where it makes sense. So on the subject of overrides, have you looked at the ones that are in the archive and whether any of them make sense at all? Um, I'm pretty sure some of them do. Um, but basically, I don't have time to track down every of them. I do occasionally scroll over the list every now and then. Uh, that's why I learned we had one in every five override is for uh, Minkiv and the likes where they have used of something, uh, and then they have some object files for cross-compiling into whatever platform. Um, and that makes up every one in five overrides on Lynch and Debian at all, which sort of surprised me. Um, but other than that, I don't really have time to dig into everyone. So occasionally I see something suspicious and I follow up with it, but most of the time it's just meh. If you're interested in that, you're also welcome to uh, go hunt overrides. And in regards to your comment about being uh, on writing LinkedIn text and you get to be on top of the policy and all that. It's actually not how it happens. Most people start asking us to write checks for um, questionable behavior or for new uh, things like system D. And eventually, those get promoted to be a part of the policy. So LinkedIn is often ahead of the policy in many regards. Of course, there's sometimes that the policy maintainers add something. Uh, but in that case, Ross, uh, Ross the policy maintainer, tends to uh, just give us a list of this is what we're about to include in the new policy. Uh, some of it we, can might, we might be able to check from the rest. People have to do themselves. So it's, if that's what scares you, I can tell you, you, you don't need to remember the policy by heart. I don't. And often I don't read it for this purpose at all. Um, and you can even start with a simple things such as reading through our tag descriptions because most of them have typos and whatnot because Nobody reports those. Oh, well, some do, but not a lot. Um, and I'm actually considering to end, add translation support for tag descriptions, uh, if only to get more people to review them. Um, so. OK, we have some eight minutes left. Are there any other questions or comments, desires? David again. Lots of talk, not so much work. Um, have you considered uh, a Lindian sprint? I mean, do you think you might get people to show up for it? Uh, it would be fun. Uh, it would definitely be fun, but I'm, I'm concerned whether or not people would say anything. They just show up there and eat the food and say, yeah. Um, so. But OK, uh, perhaps we can see a show of hands. How many people would be interested in attending a lynching sprint for the purpose of working on lynching or lynching-based checks? Show of hands. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of lying because I'm too far away. But <laughs> 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 OK, the, but there are at least five to six. So we might be able to do that. OK. Okay, any other final remarks here? David again. <laughs> uh, doing my job for a change. Um, Ganef raises his hand. He will attend the Lintian sprint. Now, I'm not sure they're doing it. <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay, but if there's nothing more to s people want to say, then uh, I think I will call it call it a, um, a buff. So thank you all for coming.